Hello, and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we are making a spring-inspired soap using this fragrance from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It's called Lavender and Basil. It smells really good. It's a little herby, a little floral. It's a nice blend, and it behaves really well in soap. I have used this before, so no acceleration or rising or weirdness going on. Very well-behaved fragrance and I wanna do some piping on top. This will be my first time doing piping in my new little Amazon mold that I've been using, my smaller batches. Uh, so let's talk about the colors first. So being a lavender basil, I wanted to do a purple and a green, and I don't have a lavender mica, but I have a lilac mica from Bee Scented, and this is such a beautiful mica. So that'll be my purple in the body of the soap and for the lavender buds on top. I'm gonna pipe this color, and then for the stems on my lavender buds and leaves, <laughs> I'm gonna use this pine mica from Bee Scented. These two together I thought looked really, really pretty. And uh, they're just kind of feeling like spring at my house here in Middle Tennessee. At the time of filming this, the daffodils are up and things are starting to sprout. Now we always have a throwback. Um, things get warm, everything sprouts, and then we get a freeze, but <laughs> and I fall for it every year. But anyway, I'm looking forward to spring. Actually, by the time this video comes out, it's gonna be spring. All right, let's talk about the piping tips. I have this tiny little leaf tip that I'm going to use, and I have this little open hole that I'm gonna use to make uh, dots for the lavender buds, and I'm also gonna make stems with this. So I have to use my little they're little couplers that you put inside the piping bag and then you can switch the tips out on it midstream when your bag is full of soap and uh, these work really handy for that. So I'll have to switch out the tips for the green and then the purple is just gonna be the tiny little dots. Um, I did a lavender one last year and I loved how it came out so much. I'm gonna try and duplicate it again this year. So for today's recipe, I'm gonna be using my rendered bacon fat. Uh, I did a whole other video using that. I bought this huge bucket. I got it for such a good price. I couldn't pass it up and I tested it out and I absolutely loved the final soap and uh, the rendered lard smells like bacon and I was really skeptical but after saponification my old the bars that I made in the previous video they just smell fantastic you can only smell the fragrance oil not even a whiff of bacon smell I'm so thankful I'm because I got this big bucket I'm like oh mercy if this if all of my soap smells like bacon how am I going to use this up <laughs> but it doesn't and it soaked really well and I will leave the full recipe down below for the recipe we're doing today um, and it soaked like a dream in that previous video, I did a lather test and I lathered the soap. It was about 72 hours after making it and it had a very creamy, dense lather, not bubbly. Well, I just wanna say that that soap, after it cured out and I have it upstairs at my kitchen sink, it lathers beautifully. So the lather sort of developed in it as it cured out. And I thought that was interesting. Um, I haven't soaked with lard a lot over the years. It just hasn't been a go-to oil for me until I got this <laughs> bucket of rendered bacon fat on sale, which it was like under 50 cents a pound. It was such a good price. Couldn't pass it up. And lard and tallows are a homestead soap making staple. Now, of course, if you make only vegan soaps, that's not a soap for you and that's totally fine. There are so many vegan options for soapers out there. Uh, power to you. But I got this for a great price. That's what we're using today for a portion of the oils. And again, the recipe will be down below. I'll talk about it real quick when we go through it. But if you want a more in-depth video of the recipe, I'll leave a link for that video down below. Also, I think I covered everything. Let me get everything pulled together and uh, let's come back and make some spring-inspired lavender and basil soap. Okay, we are back. It's soap additives time, but first I want to talk a little about a little bit about what we're doing today. Um, I have this. It's called. It, this is a frosting comb, and you can find these in cake decorating aisles. This one actually, uh, and I've cut it down to size to fit in my mold. I got this in Germany. Um, we had taken a river cruise down the Danube River over in Germany, or over in Europe, and it was just the most fabulous two weeks my husband and I spent. Anyway, all that being said, we were at a port and they had a little marketplace set out, and I just have soap on the brain. So I look at stuff, and if I see something that looks like it would be good in the soap studio, I grab it. And I found this little uh, frosting comb over in Germany, and so here it is in my studio now in Middle Tennessee. Anyway for the soap design. Lavender basil, spring, 
we're thinking, you know, beautiful, the grass is turning green, all of that. Um, so I'm gonna pour a little layer of green in the bottom of my mold and run my little frosting comb through to hopefully make it look a little bit like grass. And then I'll do it in the pot swirl with the colors and then we'll do our piping on top. But anyway, there's a little story behind this. Uh, what else do I have going on? Oh, I did go back and look up the fragrance and the reviews and it does say it can discolor to a light yellow, which is okay. But because of that, I'm gonna add some titanium dioxide to the unmiced portion just to keep it on the brighter side. This is one part TD, water soluble TD and two parts water pre-mixed. So that's what that is. I get asked all the time, what's in that white bottle? Well, there it is. <laughs> so. The additives today are my normal ones. We're gonna do oats and kale and clay because I love it that much. Pretty much goes in all my soaps. I'm gonna do about one tablespoon in here for this volume, this amount here, and the recipes down below. I have 15.3 uh, ounces of lard, 8.5 ounces of coconut, 1.7 ounces of shea, uh, 1.7 ounces of castor oil, and 6.8 ounces of olive oil. That's what's in here, and I just added one tablespoon of kale and clay, and I will add one tablespoon of colloidal oats, or a little shy, maybe two teaspoons. So I'm gonna get these blended in our oils, and then my aloe vera lye solution, which we'll bring over in a sec, I'll talk about that, and uh, we'll get to making soap. Okay, we are back with our aloe vera lye solution. This is eight ounces of aloe vera juice uh, with a teaspoon of cane sugar dissolved in it. Then I added 4.8 ounces of sodium hydroxide, which is lye, um, and two teaspoons of sodium lactate, which helps things harden up in the mold. And there's tons of silk fibers in there. <laughs> so yeah, this, has a, this is chuck full of goodness. So I have the sugar, the silk, and the sodium lactate, which are the three additives I put in here. You don't need any of those. You could do water and lye and you're good to go. But you know, I love my extras. Also, I wanted to show you before we get into this, after I do my little grass um, layer, I'm gonna do a shimmer gold mica line just so that um, because the swirls are gonna have green in them, I want the little grass, you know, if I'm taking the time to do that, I want them to stand out. So I thought a mica line over the top, a dusting would help them stay really pronounced. So I have this off to the side and now, Let's get to adding our lye in here and get our colors. Now I have two pots for the green, um, the one for the base layer, because I wanna blend that to a nice thick trace. And then the other one, which is gonna make up the swirl and the piping on top. So I have two, two containers for the green. And just like the last time I made soap with my rendered bacon fat, uh, this, oh, and the fragrance is already in here, but this is smelling very bacony. Um, but I was so encouraged the last time I made this recipe, it did not smell a thing like bacon, not even a hint of it um, after it's saponified. So that encouraged me. Oh, my phone's ringing. All right, sorry about the phone ringing in the background. I should turn my phone off when I'm filming and I forget and so, you know, sometimes there's background noise. Anyway, let's get our colors split off and get to blending up our beautiful colors here.
All right, we are back. It's the next day, and I wanted to show you what I ended up doing yesterday. I'd been having trouble getting this little mold to go through gel phase, so I took a cooler and put it over the top on top of a heating pad that was on low for a couple of hours. Then I just turned this heating pad off. This is just a little sunbeam heating pad I got on Amazon. Super simple, but I'm hoping that I got gel phase on our soap, and look how pretty. This smells so good and it doesn't smell like bacon at all. It smells like a lavender and basil, and it looks pretty. This is just making me happy, the top of this. I could just sit and stare. I kind of don't want to cut it, but we have to. <laughs> so let's get in here and see how that little grass part with the mica line and all that, let's see how it came out on the inside. back with my single bar cutter here so that I have time to chat and we can talk about the soap and all that. It just gives me a little more time. Olga is way too efficient <laughs> for one loaf. Anyway, I'm so excited to get in here. And I tell you what, just unmolding this loaf, having it on the heating pad, I think I did get gel phase. It feels like it went through gel. It just feels a little firmer than my other batches in this loaf. I'm still getting to know my new soap mold, you know? This one, I really do believe we went through gel phase. It just, like I say, it feels that way. Oh, the grass looks so cute. It really does look like little blades of grass. Oh, I'm happy. And I'm glad I used the mica in there so that it just kind of gave the little points on there, a little pop of color. So fun. All right. I'm a happy girl. This is giving me all the spring vibes. So here's a funny story. Today, the day when I'm cutting this, I released a video on YouTube, uh, my bacon fat soap, and this is that recipe. And I have had so much wonderful feedback from you all. Thank you so much for all your comments, input. A lot of you are familiar with home rendered uh, bacon fat, beef uh, fat, you've recycled your oils, and I think that's so fabulous. So anyway, I thought it was funny that I'm cutting this soap with the same recipe on the day that that video released. Um, and it's just, you all have been so wonderful with your input. It's so helpful for everybody. We all can learn from each other. And this does not smell like bacon at all today. And so some of the comments that I got on that video, which I can leave a link down below, it has the same recipe though, <laughs> um, are that yes, it, it you will not, saponification kills any odors in the rendered fats so don't worry about that and it is true i'm finding out that it definitely does not come through so that is a happy happy note for me because you know again i did buy that big old pail of rendered bacon fat <laughs> and i was going to be sorely disappointed if i couldn't make soap with all that all right let's keep cutting here these were so fun to make I just love making soap. <laughs> it is just, you know, like I said, when I bought that little um, frosting comb, I really do have soap on the brain. Anytime I'm at a store that has like kitchen gadgets or um, different vessels, pottery, I'm thinking of candles, I'm thinking of soap. It's just kind of always wheeling in the back of my mind. Are you that way too? <laughs> if you're a maker, I would love to know if you are as uh, preoccupied with your craft as I am. And the aloe vera, so I did a full aloe vera for the liquid portion, so these are gonna be wonderful on your skin. Of course, you have to be careful with soap, not to make any health claims. Um, it's a bar of soap that will clean you, but I sure do love having aloe vera and oats and things in my soap. I just think it feels great. And the little grass is coming across much more pronounced here. Gets the theme in there, I think. So I'll talk about the next video I have coming up. Uh, I think it'll be after this one next week. I'm not sure of the dates yet, but I do have, I'm gonna go head to head. I made two simple recipes, um, a tallow soap and a lard soap. And we're gonna go head to head and see, do a lather test on them and uh, see how the bars feel, if they feel exactly the same, if I can see a difference. So we will have a lard versus tallow. Did I say tallow? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have a lard versus tallow soap challenge coming up very soon after this, because um, I'm really loving using this rendered lard, which of course, lard and tallows are homestead soaping staples 
it's been around for longer than I have. <laughs> so it's a great way to recycle those things too. And if you don't know the backstory, um, I'm a homeschool mom of four and my first batch of soap was for a science class with my children to show them how you take something greasy like fat and you add something caustic and you know dangerous like lye sodium hydroxide and then you get this wonderfully gentle cleansing thing i just the science behind soaping saponification i think is fascinating and it was a really fun science project so if you didn't know that already that's how i made my first batch of soap Well, even though these are nice and hard, I'm gonna go ahead and let them sit for a few hours before I come in and do my beveling and stamping and all the things that I do with my soap because I love it, just because it's fun. And I thank you for joining me today. And I hope you give the recipe a try. If you do and you love it, please leave a comment. Let us know how you're loving it. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm going for 100,000. I'm so excited. Getting close. And I need your help to get there. So if you enjoy the videos and you haven't subscribed, please do. And I hope you have a wonderful day.